Congratulations on making it to level two. You are one step further. So let's take it one step further then. So instead of just solving equations, we're going to add in the real world piece where we need to write the equation and then solve. And so equations, the whole point behind them is to be able to find that missing information in order to solve problems. So here are things you're going to need to consider because it may not be as easy to write the equation as you may, might think it is. Um, so let's look at the first part. The first thing, and go ahead and fill in your blanks, is uh, to consider is what do we already know? What's the information they already give us in the problem? Okay, because that's going to be the numbers we will use on either one side of the equation or possibly the other, um, depending on what where it goes. And then we also obviously need to consider what do I need to find or need to know. So this is the problem, or this is the part of the problem. Um, where it doesn't give us the information. So, uh, like it doesn't give us the number. It gives us the information, but not the number. And so this is what our variable is going to be, kind of like when we did expressions. And then the last part is to understand what's the relationship between the values. So this is going to be the operation part. Now the hardest part about writing equations from a uh, real world problem is we tend to write, uh, want to already start solving them. And we need to stop and think what's truly happening, and that's going to give us our equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this together. So we are not going to solve any of these. You can absolutely go back and solve them yourself if you want, but the focus on this video is more the writing piece. And so we're going to scaffold that and break it down for you by talking about what do we know, what do we need to know, what operations are happening to lead us to that equation. However, when you go to do the practice, you can um, still write this information down if you want, but the goal is for you to take what we're learning from this video and then be able to more quickly write the equation. So when you're doing your practice, it's going to have the equation, and then you're going to have to solve and write the answer. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear because it's a little bit different setup. I'm doing it a little more specifically for your notes, but you're going to need to actually write the equation and solve on your practice and quick check, okay? So just keep that in mind as we're moving forward. So let's take a look at our first problem. It says the charge for a microwave repair visit was $81.21, which included the tax. If the tax was $6.70, how much did the repair cost? So let's break it down with what do we know. So for what we know, I'm going to look at the numbers, okay, because that's the part I care about. So I know that the tax was $6.70, and I also know that the total repair, including the tax, was $81.21. So those are the two pieces we do know. We know the tax, we know the total. So the part that we need to know, I'm actually going to look at the question in this case, it's not always in the question, but in this case it is, is we don't know how much the actual repair cost. So that's the cost of repair. That's the part we need to know. Okay, and I'm just getting that when I look here, I'm like, okay, it's asking us that, so that's obviously the part we need to know. Now when I stop and think about the operation, it's not always a key word in the um in the problem, sometimes you have to really stop and think if you were in that situation. So if I was either the person getting charged or um, the person doing the repair, either way, I would need to understand that my total is 8121. So how did I get there? If that's my total, how did we get there? We get there by using the cost of the repair plus the tax in order to get our total. And so that means we are doing addition in this case. That's not how we're gonna solve the problem, that's how the equation is being set up, okay? So we, we solve by doing the opposite thing to get it, but we wanna know, well, what's happening to our variable? And when I think of cost of repair, the thing that's happening to that is we are adding the tax to then get the total. Okay, so when we write our expression, you can use whatever variable you want. I'm going to use C for cost of repair. So when I think of my variable, I have C, and then I'm going to add the $6.70 of tax to equal my 821. So my equation is C plus 6.70 equals 81.21. Now, of course, you could have these flip-flop because you could do the tax plus the repair. Either way, it doesn't really matter. And yes, you can have a different variable. You can even have this totally flip-flop. You could have the total equals first. I just don't tend to write it that way. Um, but you do need to have the 
the variable plus 6.70 on one side equaling the 8121 on the other side. Because then when we go to solve this, to find that missing piece, we would then subtract the 670 on both sides. But when we look at the equation of how we actually represent this problem, it is with addition because you're taking the cost of the repair plus the tax to equal the total. Okay, feel free to rewind, go back and look at something, but I'm going to move on to the next one. Make sure you're getting all your blanks filled in. Alrighty, so we have, according to CBS, in 2010, the average cost of a Super Bowl ticket was $3,509. This, so meaning that cost, that price, this is $441 less than the cost of a 2015 Super Bowl ticket. How much was a ticket in 2015? Okay, so there's a lot of numbers, lots of things going on here. So we got two different dates, right? They're comparing the tickets for 2010 versus 2015. So let's look at the numbers that we know. We know that a 2010 ticket costs $3,000, or sorry, $3,509. We know that because that's what it tells us. I'm just reading it from the problem. We also know that that ticket, that 2010 ticket, is 441 less than a 2015 ticket. So those are the two pieces we know. Now I know that's a little lengthy, but I need you to, I tried to shorten it as much as I could for you, but you really need to have all that written down. It's very important. So we know the cost of a 2010 ticket, but we also know that that ticket is $441 less than the 2015 ticket. Okay. Now the thing we need to know is we don't, they don't ever tell us how much the 2015 ticket price was. So we do not know the price of a ticket in 2015 but we can figure it out based off what they gave us. So this one is really tricky, okay? So you really need to use some of the keywords in here and it's telling us 441 less than. And when we're saying less than, it's less than the 2015 ticket price, which is what we don't know. So we really need to subtract here Okay, we're going to subtract from that 2015 Super Bowl ticket. Because remember, our equation isn't representing like our answer. It's representing what did we start with, and then we can use that to solve. Okay, so I know some of you might be thinking addition. Well, yeah, when you solve it will be. But when we're setting up the equation, it's going to be subtraction. Okay, so I always try and think first when I write my equation. I always try and think first, what is happening to my variable? And so you really need to know your variable, right? Our variable is the part that we need to know, which is the 2015 ticket price. So what's happening to that? Well, we're comparing the 2010 ticket price to it. So we're going to take the 2015 ticket price, so our variable, minus 441 to equal the 3,509. Okay, so here's the 2015 ticket price. I just use X if you want to use something different, that's fine. If I take $441 away from that, I end up with the 2010 ticket price, which is $3,509, okay? So when I go to solve this, I will add the $441 in, but right now we need to show it as the equation. It said less than, so that's why we are subtracting it from that 2015 ticket price, okay? Um, the other thing I was gonna mention about this is, now I'm losing my train of thought, um, well, I guess I just don't remember. So if I think of it, I'll come back to it. But make sure you are writing it in the correct order. We want to be taking away um, the $441 in this case. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, and again, if you want to go back and solve any, feel free. But otherwise, moving on. It says the cell phone bill recorded that, Jer that Jeremiah um, sent 532 text messages last week. About how many text messages did he send each day? All right, so I only see one number, but the other number is sneakily there, okay? So first off, we know that he sent 532 text messages last week, but then the question asks, how many did he send each day? So think, if it was a week, that means there were seven days. So those are the two pieces we know. Last week, he sent 532 texts, and there are seven days in a week. So those are the two numbers that we know. I know that seven wasn't in there, but you had to really pay attention to the weeks and then they were asking per day. So the part we need to know is how many texts did he send per day? So that's our variable. So stop and think, what's happening to your variable? You have text per day, per should remind you that we are multiplying here. 
okay? So we are taking our seven days times however many tax he sent per day, which we do not know, so that's our variable. And then that equals our 532. So we're doing seven times however many tax he sent, which I just use X. If you want to use something else, that's fine. Equals those 532 tax that he sent all together. So to find out how much per day we're going to divide, but in this case, when we're setting it up, it's really multiplication because that per day sent each day. Okay? One more here. On Friday afternoon, Maggie and her two friends washed their neighbor's cars in order to make some money. They split the payment equally and, got, and each got $3.50. How much did the neighbor pay total for washing the cars? Okay, so let's focus on what we know. We know they each got $3.50. And I don't see any other numbers, but really we know that there are three people, right? Because even though it says two friends, it says Maggie and her two friends. So we know there's three people involved and they each earned $3.50. What we don't know is what was their total earned, right? The amount they total or earned total before they split it. Now that word split should be a, a reminder to you that we are going to be doing division. Even though that's not how we solve, that's how the equation is getting set up. Okay, so we have division happening. So what's being divided? Well, it's what they earned, right? The payment, the total earned. So that's going to be our variable. And how are we splitting it? Well, by the three people. So we're taking our total earned divided by the three people, which equals the $3.50 they each earned. So I'm going to have M divided by 3. I just used M because of money, but you choose whatever you like. Equals 3.50. Okay, and if you want to set it up with a fraction, you can have M over 3. That works too, whatever you prefer. If you want to use the division sign or the fraction bar, either way. Okay, so you have some practice problems, and again, you need to not just write the equation, you also need to solve it, and when I say solve, I should not just see your work, right? I should see, like, rewriting the equation, showing what you did to both sides, and then getting your answer, and then write the answer in that blank, so it's very clear, with your label, okay? So you gotta be very specific. Make sure you check with the answer key before you come get the quick check from me. All right. Um, it's very important that you take your time on this and that you look really carefully at the answer key so that your work looks pretty much exactly the same as mine. Okay. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Good luck. You got this.